It's common in English to describe a certain place as a Mecca after the Islamic tradition of Hajj. A Mecca is that one place for that one activity that you've got to go there at least once if you're involved in that particular activity or community. It's the locus around which that community exists. Evo is without a doubt the Mecca of the fighting game community. And if you've just come into the FGC with the release of Street Fighter VI, or just want to know more about the history of the FGC, grab a beer or a cup of coffee and sit down, because this is the brief history of the Mecca of Fighting Games, the EVO Championship. Hey there, my name is Old Man Banjo, and I make videos on the history of gaming. Let's get to it. EVO began as a series of tournaments held in the Bay Area of California in the late 1990s. For those non-Americans, that's this bit here. It was founded by two brothers who are absolute legends in their own right and also deserve a video. Tom and Tony Cannon. If you're playing a modern game like Guilty Gear Strive or Street Fighter VI and enjoying a playable and fair online experience, it is because of these two legends who developed what is now referred to as Rollback Netcode. A form of netcode that, to try to put it briefly, checks what is happening in the game and makes sense of it using a probabilistic system to judge whether lag unfairly played a role in the frame data turning out the way that it did. The TLDR, it makes sure that Ken can't just drag and punch you to death because he's lagging. Oh yeah, and they're also making a new fighting game for Riot Games. No big deal. The origins of EVO date back to the Street Fighter II scene in an arcade in Sunnyvale, California, the golf land. This was the place where the northern and southern Street Fighter communities came to settle their various rivalries. Cannon himself says he began attending these tournaments while at university. Quote, I was in college, studying computer science in NorCal. Lucky for me, Sunnyvale Golfland was one of the hottest spots for competition in the whole country, was 13 miles south of campus. So twice a week, I would take the bus down to play, usually one day to practice and another day to compete in the local tournament there. It was out of these local tournaments that the embryonic form of EVO would emerge with the creation of the Battle by the Bay in 1996. Tony Cannon puts the creation of the tournament down to the revolutionary power of the internet to allow people to do what people do with the internet, namely trash talk each other. After hours of online discussion, Cannon claims him and his brother founded the tournament as a put up or shut up moment for the local scene. So the tournament began with Graham Wolf taking first place in the Street Fighter Turbo Series and the soon-to-be legendary Alex Valle taking first place in Alpha 2. The tournament would then disappear for four years, but it was held again in 2000. The world, though, was beginning to change. The internet was now popular. Gaming had begun to gain traction competitively. StarCraft over in Korea was even being televised. Gaming was being taken seriously and eyes would be on EVO in a way they hadn't been the last time around. EVO had more games than ever before with the release of Street Fighter Third Strike and Marvel vs. Capcom 2. But it would also bring more of something else, something more important to the enjoyment of the fighting community than perhaps anything else. Epic, dramatic rivalry. The winners of the tournament would be flown out to Japan for an exhibition match against the best Japan had to offer. As Cannon recalls, these events also led to Bang on the Machine, a documentary by Peter Kang. All this newfound attention the fighting game community was seeing would also lead to an exhibition match between Daigo Umahara and Alex Vahey in the United States. But while Street Fighter was attracting new attention in Japan, the arcade scene in the United States, on the other hand, was beginning to die. Arcades are expensive to run, and without other people to play against, the scene can quickly dwindle. I'm sure a lot of us over a certain age know the surreal feeling of walking into an empty arcade circa 2001, and then just walking right back out again. A place of ruckus and activity now feeling like some sort of liminal tomb. While arcades remain popular in Japan to this day, it would be a Japanese invention that would help kill the US arcade scene, and thus give birth to EVO. Prior to the release of the PlayStation 2, the quality of arcade games was vastly superior to what was available on home consoles, especially in terms of frame rate, something that really matters for arcade games. But this was rapidly changing, and the old arcade culture of the 80s and 90s was being rapidly replaced by the internet, the home computer, and home consoles. 
As more gamers stayed at home, the arcade scene died faster than a free-to-play MMORPG with no players. Only it was, you know, the real life outside of your house, you bunch of Zoomers. Anyway, if you've watched the video this far and you're enjoying it, please throw me a like and subscribe. It helps keep me motivated to keep researching this stuff for you. Anyways, back to Evo. By 2001, the tournament had been relocated to Folsom, California. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 was all the rage, and this time, the tournament would see the rise of a 15-year-old Justin Wong, who would take first place. As time passed and 2004 rolled around, Evo could no longer resist the tide of the times, and the tournament shifted from being played on arcade machines to the format we're now all used to, playing on consoles. A first. Now, for those of you that never played in arcades, this probably seems like just a natural evolution, but trust me, it was really controversial at the time, and a lot of hardcore fighting gamers were not enjoying the decline of the arcade scene. As GameSpot's Steven Kleckner noted, the Evolution staff is hoping to eliminate all of these problems with all the console systems and bring your own stick rule. Everyone is competing on the exact same controller they have been practicing on at home with the exact same version of the game that will be at the tournament and no one will have anyone to blame but themselves when they lose. It's a win-win situation. For the bigger games, consoles would be provided, and for the smaller tournaments, they operated with a bring-your-own-console policy. The only game still being played on arcade machines in 2004 would be Third Strike, presumably because it lacked an equally functional console port at this stage on either the Xbox or PS2. This decision was not without controversy, but in hindsight, we can see how it was a complete necessity. The arcade scene was now on its very last legs in 2004, and forcing people to play on an arcade machine when very few players still practiced on one, and certainly could not afford the purchase price of a cabinet themselves, was just a necessity. As well as this, many new fighting games such as Soul Calibur 2 had a largely console-based audience. I know myself that I really only played Soul Calibur 2 during this era largely because there were no arcades around me. This change is, in my arbitrary view, the beginning of the end of classic Evo, the age of people gathered around arcade machines and playing each other in big tournaments. It ushered in the new era of the way we do things now, the console fighting games with people bringing their own sticks or controllers. At least outside of Japan, Korea, and also, as we've now discovered, Pakistan, the arcade scene in the West, though, really began to die, and this was its last moments. But the arcade would not go down without one last glorious moment. The last game being played on arcade in EVO, Third Strike, would provide spectators with perhaps the greatest moment, not just in the FGC, but in the entire history of gaming. For those of you who don't know what Moment 37 is, let me give a brief explainer. Daigo, the legendary Japanese player, was facing off against the prodigy Justin Wong in the loser semifinals. In the first round match, Daigo found himself on incredibly low health. Now, for this to make sense to you if you haven't played Third Strike, Street Fighter 3 has very, very effective chip damage, so blocking is not going to save you if you're already on low health. Also, Street Fighter 3 has a mechanic called parry, not too dissimilar to the new mechanic in Street Fighter VI. Only this parry ability was not a button you could hold down. Instead, you needed to precisely time your buttons in order to avoid damage from your opponent's attacks, usually using a fast button like a jab. Easy, you say. Well, Justin Wong was playing Chun-Li, who has a 15-hit super. Daigo is on low health, so the chip damage alone would be enough to knock Daigo out of the round. Daigo, to survive, would have to parry each hit perfectly. If you've never played SF3, imagine trying to do 15 frame perfect perfect parries in Street Fighter 6 in a row, only harder. Could he do it? Well, It may be nostalgia, but it feels to me like that moment summarized in age. An age of people playing fighting games in arcades, and with it was born something new, the Evo we have today. 
By 2005, the tournament had been relocated from California to Las Vegas, where it has been held each year since, barring, of course, COVID times. The tournament has continued with slow and steady growth, with 2023 being its biggest year to date. And that's it, the history of EVO. If you've enjoyed the video, do all the social things. If I've made any errors in my research, comment below and I'll pin the comments and please provide a source if you can. And until the next video, peace out.